All right. Hey, everybody. It is Hexray Vision coming to you from Cuatro Cinco Studios in Southern Utah. And I am doing our weekly Zoom live workshop. So if you guys want to be a part of this in the future and join us live and ask questions live, uh, go to the details of this, uh, this YouTube and there will be a form you can fill out and send us your email and the information. Uh, we don't share or sell your information. Uh, it just notifies you whenever we get to go live and, and uh, you can join us live. Otherwise, you can obviously watch these replays on YouTube. Uh, a couple of notices and basic information that I, I want to put out there on all of our videos. Um, number one is that cryptocurrencies are speculative and they're volatile. And because this is a new technology, you can lose everything. You know, I mean, this really is a highly risky um, asset. And so um, I would say use caution when putting money into this. The second thing I would tell you to do is don't risk any money that you need for bills, food, shelter, emergencies. If you plan on using this money over the next two years, then I would say go ahead and um, keep it keep it out of crypto because uh, right now we're in a price dip and if you needed that money to make your house payment or buy food or fix the minivan transmission then you would be stressed out right now and this this is not about stress this is about uh, hopefully financial independ independence and financial abundance and so make sure you give yourself plenty of time for this for this crypto to mature, which I would say a, a two-year time frame is the shortest I would look at it with. Um, the third thing that I like to go over is uh, your seed words. So when you set up your MetaMask wallet and it gives you the 12 seed words and, your, uh, and you set up your own password, you need to write those down. You need to write them down by hand. You need to make more than one copy and you need to keep it in a safe place. Once a week, people contact me and tell me, hey, I don't think I have those words that I wrote down. And I'm like, well, let's hope that you can get them because if, if you lose those words and you get locked out of your MetaMask account, then that, that money could be gone forever. So I can't stress that enough. Write down your seed words, write down your passwords in multiple safe places. Do not take uh, electronic uh, record of them. Don't Keep them on your computer, saved under a file that says passwords. Don't take a picture with your phone because uh, we've seen people recently where their phones and their computers got hacked and, you know, they lost millions and millions of dollars of hacks. So write that stuff down, keep it in a safe place. Okay. The next thing I'd like to cover really quickly is um what do I get out of this? This is something that was just recently brought to my attention. Uh, people have shared some of my videos with their friends and they say, this sounds like an MLM. This sounds like, like a, someone that's trying to sell me something, some uh, vacuums or some oils or some soaps or something. And what I get out of this, honestly, is I'm trying to import and share this information with as many people as possible as soon as possible. Uh, because I've seen what it's done in my life and the life of other people. And so, uh, believe it or not, I want as many people as possible to join this community and receive uh, financial abundance and freedom. That's really where my heart is. Um, there are some people that I know that I trust that charge for this service. So if you go to them, uh, they'll charge about $100 an hour. And they'll walk you through this step by step and they'll help you. And I honestly believe that this information is worth more than $100 an hour. And I have no problem referring people to someone to help them. Uh, however, uh, I'm not charging for anything here on YouTube. I don't have any products. So um, I just offer this as free information, educational and otherwise. So if you take this information and run with it, the losses that you occur or the gains that you occur are your own. They're not my responsibility. They're your responsibility. So um, the other thing that I get out of this is that 
if this video uh, has the butterfly effect and ripples out to millions of people and millions of dollars, then that will positively affect the price of Hex. So, I mean, there is a selfish motive there that I would love millions and millions of people to get into Hex and dump millions and millions of dollars in it because that would definitely positively affect the price. So, I mean, it's not completely altruistic, but the main reason is that I do really want to help people. So that's what I get out of this. So if you're thinking that this is like too good to be true or, you know, a pyramid scheme or MLM, it's really not. It's just computer code and that we've learned about and learned to, to benefit from. So with all that out of the way, uh, I'd like to do a really quick overview of what we're talking about, what Hex is, what cryptocurrency is and how it works. And then we'll go into some questions. So Hex is a cryptocurrency and all that a cryptocurrency is, is a currency or a money that lives on computers. So this is not a currency that your bank controls. This is not a currency that the government controls. This is an electronic currency that lives on the internet and on you know cloud computing and servers around the world. So basically the computer keeps track of where the money is and who has what. And uh, about 11 years ago, a lot of people have heard of the name Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the first coin to really stand on its own legs. And even though it, you know, it had some growing pains and some problems, it stuck around and it went from less than a penny to over 60 grand. You know, I think it's in the fifties right now, but basically all that this, all that Bitcoin does is it allows you to send it to someone else and it allows you to get paid in Bitcoin if you use your computer to secure the network. So that's basically what Bitcoin is. Um, the biggest difference in Hex is that Hex pays people who lock it up and promise not to sell it, the inflation, and Bitcoin pays the people that secure it, the inflation. So that's the main difference between Hex and Bitcoin. So if you wrap your head around those two things, then um, just think of Hex as an online CD at a bank or a certificate of deposit. The longer you lock it up, the more interest that you get paid in the Hex coin. And the price of the Hex coin fluctuates based on whatever the market deems it's worth. So that's Hex in a nutshell. Um, the other development that we've been going through right now is a network, a uh, network called Pulse Chain. So the network that Hex runs on currently is called the Ethereum network. And the Ethereum network keeps track of how long you lock up your Hex for and paying you your inflation or your interest. So um, it used to be two years ago when Hex was created, the fees to record everything on the Ethereum network were quite low. They're cheap. They're affordable. They were anywhere from a penny to 25 cents. So you could lock and unlock and send hex with little or no cost, very little cost, I should say. In the last two years, Ethereum's network has got busier and they've changed the code to where now that cost, the same cost that used to be pennies, is now hundreds of dollars. Uh, currently, uh, see, today's date is. November 29th, and recently the fees have been around three to six hundred dollars to unlock your coins and about fifty to a hundred dollars to send them somewhere. So, what uh, the founder of Hex has done is um, he's been working to create a new network to reduce the fees. So, the new network will be called Pulse Chain. It should be coming out in the next two to four months, hopefully. And Pulse Chain should bring those fees back down to where people can afford to get into this and lock and unlock their money and receive and realize interest without losing 20 to 30% of their money to fees, which is what it currently is. It's about 20 to 30%. So when the new network comes out, you will have a copy of all of your hex coins 
both locked and unlocked that are on the Ethereum network, they'll be copied over to the Pulse Chain network. So you'll have two different sets of hex, one that runs on each of the two networks, and they will have different values. So both of those dollar values of those two hex are going to fluctuate against each other. So with that being said, um, I'm not sure if anyone here has any questions on the overview. If not, we'll go into the questions. We've already had a question asked before the broadcast started. So we'll jump into that if we don't have anything here. All right, so I don't see any questions in the chat. I don't hear any questions from both participants, but you know what, that's good. That's good, we'll move on. So the question was asked um, about um, HEX. Uh, the price of HEX has been grinding downward and in um, a dip or a crash the last few months. And a lot of this reason is because of the Ethereum fees that we're facing right now that I mentioned. So like I said, it used to be that a well or someone with a lot of hex would dump a half a million to a million dollars worth of hex on the market and that would crash the price. Um, back in the day when the fees weren't so high, a lot of people like myself that are trying to accumulate hex would um, buy it up whenever the price went down and we would buy it up very quickly. So when you saw the price go down, it would quickly recover and go back up to where you know it crashed from. But as we've seen recently, when the wells sell half a million, a quarter million, a million dollars worth of hex on the market, um, at that point, uh, it's taking longer for the for the um, price to be bought back up. And in some cases, it's been stair stair stepping down to where it is right now. Today, I think it was around 17 or 18 cents is where it is currently. It's all time high was above 50 cents, depending on what exchange or what chart you were looking at. It was somewhere between the, the price of 52 to 55 cents. And so, like I said, now we're grinding down around 17 or 18 cents. And a lot of people are taking the hit and paying the huge, the high Ethereum fees to continue to accumulate it even at this price. And so um, there's more people buying it than selling it right now. However, the sell orders are much bigger than the buy orders because the buy orders are coming from people with less money and they're incurring these big fee costs. So they're not able to move as much money into HEX as they would like after paying the fees. So we truly are waiting for Pulse Chain to come out and relieve some of the pressure and um, traffic on the network, on the Ethereum network, which should hopefully bring down the Ethereum fees. And then also at the same time, the fees on the Pulse Chain network should be very low, um, very affordable. So uh, if they're cheap again, then that'll allow more people to buy without losing so much money in fees. It'll also allow people to lock and unlock their coins. So there's that. The other thing that's happened recently is we had a pre-sell for the Pulse token. So right now we use the Ethereum token to pay for our, our fees and our transactions. And when the Pulse Chain Network comes out, we'll be paying those fees in the Pulse token. And so there was a pre-sale um, or a sacrifice phase of 19 days a few months ago where people were sacrificing or giving their coins in order to make a, a statement that they were sick of the high gas fees. And in return, um, they're going to be rewarded some pulse tokens on the new network. And so we had this pre-sell. And what we noticed was that at the beginning of the pre-sell, the price of HEX went from 8 cents 
all the way up to 22 cents in the first day or two. And, you know, that was great because you got a better value for your tokens that you sacrificed the first few days. But after that, the, the whales or the people with large amounts of hex were uh, pushed the price down and sold the price down very low. And so people that sacrificed or donated to the pre-sale got less um, value or they got less credit for the US dollar value of their tokens that they were donating and sacrificing in this pre-sell, also known as the sacrifice phase. And ever since then, we've seen the wells continue to push the price down. And in my opinion, they're trying to scare people into selling their hex before the snapshot or the fork. And when the snapshot or the fork, which is, is happens at the same time, when this fork takes place, it takes a picture of the entire Ethereum network and it copies those coins over piece by piece using the same accounts and the same wallets they're held in. So basically it would be like taking a picture of your bank account and then having your checking account show up at another bank with the same balance in it, the same balance of dollars. But in this case, it would almost be like, like another country taking a picture. And now you have a bank account in Mexico with the identical number of pesos, right? Because they're gonna have different values on the two different networks, okay? So basically my theory and my, my belief is that the whales are trying to get as many people as possible to sell their tokens to the whales at a cheap price. And then the, the whales will get a copy of these tokens instead of the little guys that they're, you know, chasing and frightening out, uh, scaring into selling their tokens. And just recently, yesterday or the day before, Richard Hart, the founder of Hex and Pulse Chain, announced that there will be a, a sacrifice phase or a pre-sell, if you want to think about it that way, for another token which will be called the pulse swap token. And the pulse swap token will be a token or a coin that is used in an exchange. So when the new network launches and goes live, there will be exchanges on this network. And one of those exchanges will be the pulse swap exchange. And that exchange will have its own native coin or native token that you can use that'll probably go, give you a, um, it'll probably give you um, a discount on your fees in that exchange. And it will also um, be the way that they pay the liquidity providers on that exchange. So if you're new to crypto and you're new to exchanges or liquidity providing things of this nature, basically the way that an automatic market works is that you have a bunch of people that are basically providing liquidity or coins for people to trade back and forth on these exchanges. And in the past, you've had to put equal amounts of two different coins onto the exchange for people to trade back and forth. So for instance, um, we're on the Ethereum network with Hex right now. So a lot of people trade Ethereum and Hex back and forth. So if I wanted to be a liquidity provider right now on the exchange that exists right now, I would put equal amounts in US dollar value of Ethereum and Hex, and I would provide those and I would lock them into the exchange. And in return, there would be a smart contract written on the Ethereum blockchain that would keep track of how much um, money I provided to the exchange to swap back and forth. And when all the fees were collected on that exchange, I would be given a reward based on how much of the total percent percentile that I provided. 
So if I provided 10% of the liquidity on the exchange, I would receive 10% of the rewards for the fees that people pay on that exchange. That's where the reward comes from is the fees that people pay to the liquidity providers and to the Ethereum network. So, and the exchange has its own coin. Right now, there's an exchange called Uniswap. And Uniswap has its own coin called the UniCoin, UNI. And, you know, if I were to take $10,000 of HEX and $10,000 of Ethereum and lock them up on Uniswap, then I would be paid this UniCoin as my reward for the fees that they collect and the fees that people pay to use this exchange. So how does this work with what we talked about earlier, which was the sacrifice phase or the pre-sell for the pulse swap coin? Well, when the pulse swap, uh, when pulse chain network launches, there's going to be an exchange on it or probably many exchanges, but one of the exchanges is gonna be the pulse swap chain exchange. And so if you take your copy of both hexes and you put them onto this exchange, because people will be trading back and forth between the hex that lives on the Ethereum network and the hex that lives on the Pulse Chain network. Okay. So if you provide, because now you've got a clone, so you can take equal amounts of E hex and P hex and you can lock them up in this new exchange. And in this exchange, we'll pay you the Uniswap. I'm sorry, the pulse swap token. And the pulse swap token will have its own value that goes up and down in US dollar value, right? So um, they're offering a pre sell or a sacrifice phase where you can exchange your hex and a few other coins value and receive, um, you can receive this pulse swap coin. Or you can also trade the pulse swap coin in the exchange itself and most likely receive a discount for using the pulse swap coin because that'll be like the main coin that lubricates this exchange or this system, right? And so why do I bring up the fact that we're having another sacrifice for another coin? Well, same reason that I was talking about the whales pushing the price of hex down to get the copies. The wells also are likely to push the price down of hex so that they get, so that people have less economic power and less US dollar value to enter into this next uh, sacrifice or pre sell than the wells do. So the whales will take the money that they have in one coin or another and they'll buy up the lion's share of this pre-sale because they believe that there's going to be a lot of value in this in the future. So to be blunt, there's no reason that I see right now that the wells have to push the price of hex up above where it is right now at 17 or 18 cents until the pre-sales are over and until the fork of the new network shows up and they get as many free coins or as many free copies of coins as possible. At that point, I can see them, you know, pushing the price or allowing the price of hex to rise back up to where it was before the all time high of 50 cents and even higher. And I think that'll happen fairly shortly after the launch of, of the pulse pulse chain network. So uh, it sounds like I just realized that I look like I'm about a hundred years old with bags under my eyes because I forgot to turn on my light here. Give me two seconds. I'm going to flip on this light. So it gives me a little more, a little more glamor light. So I look a little, a little more attractive and a little more youthful for you guys.
boom, Hollywood. Look at that. I look at least 20 days younger than I did just a second ago. So you're welcome. <laughs> All right. So I just went over a silly, silly amount of information. Is there anything I can clarify, go over any questions that I can answer over what I've gone over? Because I mean, it wasn't that well organized and it maybe wasn't very simple for people that this is a new concept too. Jamie, what do you think? You can also uh, type a question in chat if you don't want to do that. So Jamie, your microphone is unmuted. I figured that was because you were going to remind me to, to explain something. What would you recommend for that sacrifice for someone that doesn't have a lot of money to spend? I would say, uh, thank you for the question, Jose. That's a really good question. And I actually get asked that a lot by people. They say, you know, I've got X amount of dollars. They might say, you know, I've got $500 that I know I can invest in this and that's it. And they don't feel like that's a lot of money compared to, you know, obviously some of these wells that are dumping millions. <laughs> some of the wells are dumping billions of dollars into this. So, yeah. So if someone comes and says, Hey, I got a hundred bucks, I got 50 bucks, I got 5,000 bucks, whatever it is, how do I get the most bang for my buck? And the answer to that is almost always dollar cost average, which means take the amount that you want to invest and split it up evenly over a six month period. Right. So let's say you've got $600 to make it simple. And you say, okay, I've got $600. So every month I'm going to buy $100 of Pulse or Pulse Swap or Hex. Every month I'm just going to buy this. It doesn't matter what the price is. The price could be high, the price could be low. And basically what that does is if you buy the same amount over and over again, then that gives you a, an average cost of the coin. So you take the average cost of that coin over those six months, and that's the price you're going to pay. And that's usually really, really good. That's usually really beneficial to dollar cost average that in. The other recommendation I would make and that I've made recently to friends personally is to take a look at your finances. Take a look at what you and your spouse or your family spend every single day. And don't do it in like a crazy way, like where it's going to stress you out or make you feel guilty for the things you're spending money on. But every time you spend money, every time your spouse spends money, write it down in a notebook or write it down in a document on your phone, you know, pull up one of those, you know, note documents and write down, okay, I spent five bucks at Burger King, you know, I, I went over here, I spent this much on, a, on the utility bill. I spent this much on, you know, getting a, my oil change on my car. And then after a week or a month, go back and look at, look at what you're spending money on. Because even if you've done this before, or even if you currently do it, um, you'll continually learn new things about your behavior and your spending and your budget. So you will usually find an extra 20 to a hundred dollars pretty easily about something where you say, you know what, I would rather have an extra $20 of crypto than have that $20 of, you know, uh, soft drinks, uh, candy, burgers, um, smokes. Um, sometimes it's as simple as you going over your bank statement and finding out that you're still paying $15 a month for uh, some, you know, Spotify or Hulu or Netflix or something that you've forgotten that you're paying every month for, for five, 10, 20 bucks. And you can just go over that and find that, and be like, oh, cool. I'm going to move this five or 10 bucks over to crypto for the next six months or the next year. Uh, the, the, the key to this is to realize that this is not forever. This is temporary. So even if you say something like, hey, you know what, I'm going to, you know, 
it's something as simple as snow cones or a candy bar. You're going to say, you know what, for the next six months, I'm going to take the money that I used to spend on junk food or something that I don't really need. And I'm going to put all of that money into crypto for the next six months. And after that six months or after that year, I can go back to, you know, drinking pop all day long or you know, it might be as simple, as simple as going to the movies once a month or whatever discretionary income that you say, you know what, I'm willing to sacrifice this guilty pleasure or this, you know, miscellaneous expense for six months. And for those six months, I'm just going to put it into crypto and reward myself later. And then at the end of the six months, go back to buying whatever you buy, going back to, to whatever your spending habits are. But those are two ways, both dollar cost averaging and uh, taking a look at where you're spending your money and thinking, uh, you know, I don't get that much, like, like, I don't know, maybe it's Hulu for you, right? Like, I haven't watched anything on Hulu. I mostly watch Netflix. So I'm going to cancel Hulu for six months or a year. And I'm going to put that 15 bucks a month into crypto. And it doesn't sound like a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot. But, you know, remember, at one point, Bitcoin was under a buck. Ethereum was under a buck. And if you had invested in Bitcoin or Ethereum, even $15 back in the day, seven years ago, 11 years ago, today, those $15 would be more than enough to pay off your house. You know, these would be, these would be huge, huge amounts of money. Now, that would have just been a five, 10, $15 sacrifice back in the day. And here you have this opportunity again to sacrifice five, 10, 15, 20, $50 a month. And in the next two to four, five, six years, have a drastically different outcome. The third thing I would recommend besides DCA and take a look at your finances is I would recommend also um, really trying your hardest as a family to increase the money that you make over the next six months to a year. And that means maybe picking up extra shifts. Maybe that means DoorDash, Uber, you know, maybe that means uh, snow removal now that the snow is coming, something like that, that you're like, you know what, like, <laughs> and I, I understand, like picking up extra shifts, doing extra work when you're after you're already done, after you're already tired, after a long day, you just want to go home and relax, and chill. I totally get it. But again, the key here is temporary right? You're going to do this temporarily for the next six months or 12 months. And the payout for this temporary sacrifice could be huge. It could be life-changing. So these are just ideas that you can entertain and think about when you're thinking, how do I get the most, how do I make the most out of this opportunity? You know, I only have 500 bucks. I only have a hundred bucks what should I buy? When should I buy it? The answer is you should buy whatever is on sale and you should buy it with money that you don't need, right? So right now, there's only really two things that I would buy right now, and that's Ethereum and Hex because I buy Hex to make interest and I buy Ethereum to pay the fees, right? And right now, Ethereum is pretty high and Hex is pretty low. So right now, in my opinion, Hex is on sale. So if I were doing this dollar cost average and I were um, splitting up my extra money over the next six months, and I was also working in extra jobs or extra shifts at work and trying to bring in more income, I would be buying Hex on a regular basis whenever I had the chance. Now, like I said, uh, Pulse Chain is going to come out hopefully in the next two or four months. And there's going to, Pulse is going to go up and down just like Hex. It's going to be volatile and it's going to oscillate up and down. So there's going to be days where you look at Pulse and you're like, wow, that's cheap compared to where it's been. And maybe that's the week that you buy Pulse. And then another week, the Hex that's on Ethereum might be crashing. And you say, oh, I'm going to buy the Hex on ETH that's on sale. Or the Hex that's on Pulse chain might go down. So you might buy that one. So as long as you're accumulating all of these coins, you know, uh, Ethereum, 
for the Ethereum fees, the hex on both networks and the Pulse coin, you know, going forward, um, those are the coins that I would be looking at buying at uh, on sale or dollar cost averaging, buying the same amount at regular intervals, you know. Uh, is that a good, does that answer your question or do you got anything, any follow-up or? Is the sacrifice for the whole swap the same, is, going, is it going to be the same as it was for the Pulse chain? Um, I believe it will be. Right now, the only information that they've given us or that I've read on Twitter from Richard Hart, because if anyone says anything, I usually don't give it much uh, credibility unless it comes from Richard Hart, because, you know, he's usually knows what he's talking about because he's the one developing it. But uh, so far, he has said that there will be a sacrifice phase. He hasn't said how long it'll be or when it'll be, but he has said that there are like five or six coins or tokens that they're willing to accept right now um, for the sacrifice when they launch it. So basically when the sacrifice launched for the Pulse coin, they had an Ethereum address and a Bitcoin address and different addresses. And basically you would send a certain amount of your coins to that address. And when you sacrificed, then the the contract would recognize and remember your address and how much money you sent in for the sacrifice of the pre-sell, right? So again, um, if you're going to send an Ethereum token to an Ethereum address, then it'll remember your wallet address that you sent it from, and it'll send you know the corresponding amount of bonus or of tokens to that address when it launches. So. Yeah, so right now we don't know exactly when the sacrifice is and we don't know how many days it'll last. We only know right now that it's it's announced and that there's like five coins that they've said they plan on accepting for it. And in the future, when they give more updates, then I'll, I'll share those with you, of course, over the next weeks and, and so forth. But like I said, right now we're just like, we're like in the eye of the hurricane waiting for Pulse Chain. You know, we had this crazy run up of price. We had all these insane payouts and it's been really a really cool ride. And then everything kind of died down and got really quiet while we're waiting for Pulse Chain. And people are, like I said, it seems like it's dying. It seems like it's no good. But the truth is, you know, we're in the eye of the hurricane where it's like real quiet and still. And then when the eye of the hurricane passes, and Pulse Chain Network launches, it's gonna get crazy again, like really crazy and volatile. And you're gonna see a lot of crazy stuff happening. So, all right, good to, good to see you, Wayne. Good to see you, KB iPhone 12. Uh, let me check the chat real quick, see if anyone's, nope, no one's asked any questions in chat. Uh, any other questions from you guys? Uh, about Pulse Chain, about Hex, about stuff like that, about if you need me to turn on another light so I look 20 days younger than I do right now. All right, let me think of what else we got. So. We had a hack in our community that I talked about on Rags to Riches um, channel. Oh, by the way, uh, these are some hexkins that you could learn a lot from that I recommend following on, on YouTube. One is Rags to Riches, and you have to search Rags to Riches cryptocurrency. Otherwise, you'll just see a bunch of rap videos from that are you know titled Rags to Riches. Uh, there's Crypto Heartbeat. Crypto Heartbeat is really good at explaining a lot of good information quickly. Um, there's Conrad Zen, which is an older, um, an older British gentleman that, that drops a lot of really interesting information about Hex and the like. Um, I would also recommend Bally at Bran. 
That's uh, B-A-L-I-E-T-T-B-R-A-N. And he streams a lot and he answers questions from chat very well. Um, I would recommend joining both Telegram and Twitter and just following people with hex in their name or hexagons. Um, they're kind of crazy places if you try to follow other people. And even the, even the hexagons can get a little crazy, but for the most part, you'll learn a lot of interesting updates there. And you can also post questions there as long as they're, I wouldn't recommend posting questions about security or about your MetaMask wallet because you'll just get a bunch of scammers trying to take your information. But if you have a question such as what's a T-shirt, how does a T-shirt work? What do I do to unlock or lock my hex? You'll have a lot of helpful people with a lot of helpful information coming forward on Twitter and Telegram and following uh, Hex and Pulse Chain channels and updates there. So I definitely recommend that. Um, but like I said, we did have, uh, there was a gentleman and his SIM card was swapped on his phone, they believe. And they also got into his home computer, it seems. And because they got into his phone and they got into his home computer, they had access to his exchange accounts and his uh, MetaMask wallet, and they had it, they had control over his lock tax or his stakes. And they emergency end state, meaning they broke these contracts early, and uh, he lost about four hundred million hex in penalties that were paid to the other people that were state. And the thieves got away with about a million dollars of hex. So, unfortunately, um, this is why he, he also, uh, let me get back here. I got to wake my camera up real quick. All right. It, it seems that he also had a he had a folder on his computer that was labeled, you know, like passwords or data or something like that. So when the hackers got into his computer, they were able to sign into a whole lot of other stuff, right? So they're able to get into his MetaMask. They're able to get into his Coinbase and his other accounts. And they actually were buying Ethereum with his own money uh, from his bank on Coinbase, sending it to his MetaMask in order to pay the fees to unlock his contracts and steal the money and move that out of there. So that's another reason why I say don't keep an electronic copy of your passwords and your seed words, because if someone gets a hold of them, now you are sharing your money with that hacker for the life of that, for the life of those con those states, you know, for the for the life of those locked hex. So for the next 15 years, this hacker and this guy have to fight it out and try to figure out a way to, you know wrestle over this money that's going to come due over the next 15 years so like i said that was something that was really interesting that we learned a lot from uh so definitely write your stuff down write it down in duplicate keep it in safe places um so that was something that recently happened um there is a christmas drive going on right now on rags to riches channel if you guys look up rags to riches fam on twitter you can donate to a Christmas drive that he is helping uh, some families in, in the East Coast where he lives. So if you guys want to contribute for the holiday seasons, you can do that on that, on, on, uh, on his uh, channel, on his YouTube channel and on his Twitter, you can see information about that. Uh, later one, welcome Aaron to the stream. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing good. I couldn't find the unmute button. <laughs> That's okay. 
That's all right. Uh, glad to have you here. Um, Jose was asking some really good questions about how to get the most bang for your buck on the sacrifices and on going forward of buying pulse and buying hex. Um, Heck yeah. And then before then, another person um, was asking about the pulse swap and why, what's, what's up with the price? Why is the price grinding down? And, uh, you know, most of that's attributed to the whales manipulating the price and the high Ethereum fees right now. That's my belief. Uh, you got any thoughts on those two subjects? Uh, not really. I, I actually haven't checked it in like a week. So I don't know what's going on right now. I know Bitcoin took a dive, but. Yep. Yep. Do you have any questions about Pulse Chain or Hex? Yeah, no, not right now. I'm, I'm all, right. all in. Good. Good to have you. Good to have you. Does anyone else here, Wayne, uh, KB, Jose, you guys got any other questions for me while we're here? This might end up just being a shorter stream, which is, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to be here. Uh, and let me thank all of you for spending uh, something that's very precious, which is your time with me. I'm really honored and thankful for that. So thank you. I really appreciate. I'm grateful for your time and your attention spend with me here on this on this stream i think every time i hear you talk max it helps out so i absorb a little bit more every time so i really appreciate you oh thank you very much thank you and yeah, me yeah, too I, I appreciate it too max what you're doing is really a lot of help oh i, I really appreciate that like i said um you guys might have missed the beginning uh someone was asking uh, they were sharing some of my videos with their friends and families, and they were asking, you know, the feedback they were getting from friends and family was, this sounds like an MLM. This sounds like a pyramid scheme. These people are up there, you know, promoting and telling us to put our money in something. You know, what are they getting out of it? And the truth is, I'm getting out of the, the, the opportunity that I have to help some people get out of the situations that I was in money-wise, you know, being in debt, working at a job that may or may not be what you're what you want to do with your time here on earth and so my what i get out of it is trying to honestly pay it forward but at the same time if i can spread this message and the other hexkins can spread this message to millions of people bringing millions of dollars more into hex it's going to give us security stability in the price is also going to raise the price of the hex that we own so the selfish part of what I get out of this is that the more hexagons we have and the more investment we have, the more my hex is going to go up in price. And then obviously uh, I have this desire to help as many people as possible in the early days right now, because right now there's 71,000 wallets that have hex in them. And most of those wallets, uh, you know, a lot of those people have multiple wallets. So if you consider each one of those people have four or five wallets minimum, then there's really not that many people on earth right now that are in hex that even know about it. So to help people get in right now, before people know about it, when the price is down, anything under a dollar, I believe is a very, very good deal. Very, very good deal. I believe anything under $10 is a really, really good deal. But anything under a dollar, uh, you know, in the future, when, pe when people find out that you bought hex for under a dollar, they're going to they're going to think that you're a genius the same way that they think that the people that bought Hex, I'm sorry, Bitcoin and Ethereum under a dollar are looked at as geniuses now, you know. And the other great thing about Hex is that if you lock it up, it keeps you from selling it too early. You know, there's a lot of people that saw Hex go up to 50 cents and they sold and they're thinking that they're pretty, you know, they're patting themselves on the back right now because the price is 17 cents. You know, and when hex goes up to a dollar, there will be a whole nother group of people that sell their hex and think that they've done a great job. But as it continues to climb and climb and climb over the years, the people that were locked in that couldn't unlock and get their money out for 10 years, excuse me, are going to be very, very glad that they could not sell right now or in the next few years. They're going to be really glad that they were, in a sense, uh, coerced into holding on to this for five years and 10 years because if those people that had sold ethereum and bitcoin back in the day for ten dollars a hundred dollars a thousand dollars that have missed out on the gains that have happened since 
if they were forced to hang on to those coins for seven years, five years, 10 years, they'd be so much better off financially than they were when they sold, when they doubled their money or tripled their money or 10 times their money. So uh, thank, I'm, I'm glad that I'm here with you guys. Um, we're going to, like I said, this is being recorded. So I'm going to upload this replay onto YouTube for the people that could make it tonight. I mean, I probably shouldn't have expected a very good turnout tonight because I mean, it's, it's Thanksgiving. A lot of people are busy. A lot of people have family and friends over. I hope that all of you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving and are enjoying time with your family and, and, and loved ones. Uh, and in the meantime, like I said, we're just waiting for Pulse Chain. This is just, just we're just kind of like twiddling our thumbs in the eye of the hurricane right now, which it, it's going to be insane when it, when it kicks back up. Uh, Jamie, do you got anything? Nope. Muted. Uh, let me check my chat real quick. Uh, real quick. If you guys, like I said, if you want to add a question, you can type in chat or you can unmute your mic and ask a question. Um, let me see. I went over the Christmas drive. I went over the hack. I went over pulse chain. I went over the wells. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I went over a bunch of liquid loan stuff in my last broadcast. So if you go back to my last um, live Zoom meeting, I talked about a, a project that's trying to get uh, put on top of Pulse Chain called Liquid Loans. And Liquid Loans, if it pulls off what it's trying to pull off, then you would basically be like a bank and you would be providing the collateral for other people to take loans against their cryptos value or equity. And you would get paid in you know their fees that they paid a loan to borrow money. Or if you wanted to take a loan against your equity in crypto, you could do that. And uh, it would be a good thing tax-wise to take a loan out versus sell your crypto and pay the capital gains tax, it seems. So again, I'm not endorsing these things and they're not live, they're not ready. Um, and so I'm just, just cluing you guys into the stuff that I'm studying while we're waiting for Pulse Chain to come out. And uh, as things progress, and if they really pull it off, then I'll be here letting you guys know, hey, it's pulled off. Uh, it's been running for a month or a week or a few months flawlessly. There's no bugs or no one's found any bugs or hacked it. So this, this is how you use it, or this is how you might consider using this for yield. But then again, I mean, hex is beautiful. If you lock up your hex, then you're going to get paid every single day at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time right now. You know, you're gonna you're gonna make interest. And when pulse comes out, if you lock up your pulse temporarily, which will be every few days or so, you'll be able to unlock it or relock it. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get interest on your pulse. And it's gonna be interest that's paid to you by a computer code, not a human being. So you can, uh, you know, I put a lot more credibility and belief in, in math than I do human beings when it comes to money. So those are two beautiful things, even without, even without liquid loans, even without the pulse chain swaps and the exchanges and the other ways that people are going to be making money. So with that being said, uh, let me open it up one more time. Any future, any questions from the audience? And then we'll just stop the recording and, and uh, go about our evenings. All right. Well, again, thank you very much for spending your time with me. Um, check out uh, all my other stuff on YouTube if you get bored and you want to hear me talk.